Big heart, big heart. So, what was the, so that, what year did he graduate? 1940. 1940. Yeah, 1940, and then two years at San Diego State, and then into the military there. So, it, by the time he graduated airborne, you know, what was it like being in the military and knowing what was going on in, in Europe with with uh, Hitler? And Not too much. Yeah. There were a couple students from Germany as, as exchange students in the student body, and uh, they had to go back to Germany. Mm. Well, that's about the only thing that uh, we really paid any attention to, because they all pulled the whole student body together and made a big speech and uh, whatnot. And you're going to be into it for you know what and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and so, what was it like in the military when you when you knew that your unit was going to go over to? What was it like in the military when? Well, when you were after all your training and you're with your unit and. Like, what was the mood like shipping out overseas when you finally knew that you were gone? Well, we did Fort war. Benning, and then we did uh, uh, the Tennessee Maneuvers. Red Army, Blue Army kind of thing. And uh, they made a motion picture on it when some of the paratroopers and the 101st are going to capture the commanding general of, of the Red Army. <laughs> 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 and we did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Uh, we maneuvered around Tennessee in the bad weather, and one of the really funny incidents of my mortar squad uh, was at, at the end of uh, Company C, and we were uh, maneuvering around some old ramshack houses, and it was occupied. We could smell fried bacon. So the owner, an old hillbilly, came out with his corncob pipe and invited some of the guys in for, uh, for breakfast. And they had a Model T Ford out there, and uh, they put parts of the mortar, the base plate, and the and the uh, tri and the bipod, and the sights, and all these things on the fender. They went. I stayed outside just in case, so I knew what was going on. Keep if the company stopped or kept moving. Well, they got most of that breakfast down, I guess. So I called them out, and uh, well, we started out trying to catch up, and we had to cross the stone bridge. The guy got sick and tired of carrying that darn mortar, so they threw the base plate in the river. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the bipod went too. Yeah. So now we got the tube, <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> so it comes time to settle down in uh, the Tennessee maneuvers there in the fields, and it was a big haystack, and so we tore the haystack apart, and made little haystacks all around the field in our own individual things, and the farmer came out, and he's at night. Evidently, I had left my site for the mortar there, and the farmer picked it up, and he sold it back to the army for thirty-six dollars. Oh. So I got called on that. Yeah. I had to pay for that. So that was the background of me being told to run Mount Curry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could be eating spaghetti at lunch, uh, and all of a sudden they'll call, uh, "Stop eating! Go get your trunks and running shoes on. We're going to run Mount Curry." And so half the guys got sick throwing up spaghetti on the way up. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, the record for running Mount Curry was 42 minutes. And in a group run with officers and men, uh, a buddy and myself, we ran it. I ran it in uh, uh, 38 minutes. Wow. I didn't tell anybody because they wouldn't accept it. Yeah. You can't breach some officers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, <clears throat> January 1, we were on the way to uh, uh, England from Boston, Massachusetts, in a camp. I think it's Camp Miles Standish. It was the filthiest thing you could ever imagine, running thousands of guys through there. Sanitation was unbelievable. I got mumps on both sides of my jaw. So on board ship, uh, William G. Goff was over going over to Scotland and England, uh, I was put in isolation. I had white sheets and I could hear the guys doing calisthenic jumps and things up on top side. And, uh, that was a miserable trip. How long was that boat ride? How long was the boat ride over to... to ten days. Ten days. Yeah, ten days and no, uh, that was a slow boat to China almost, uh, a <laughs> convoy. Yeah, you know. especially in Ended isolation. Ended up in Glasgow. Glasgow, okay. And then from there, I took 10 guys to the hospital, another 10 guys there, there. 
then took about 15 guys south to Lambourne, where the company was, got organized back into the company. And then training, 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 marching, marching, marching. Uh, field problems, field problems, all the, all day long. And if we tried to pull off some stunts, like if you saw the you know, longest day, or the Bander Brothers, or one of the guys in Company E, Second Platoon, uh, mimicked the uh, company commander, and he, he was mimicking him and pretending to be a battalion commander, and, and scared the dickens out of that poor. His name was Sobel. Have you seen the uh, yeah, Dan, seen Okay, that. you know the background of that. <laughs> we, we, we did all kinds of crazy things. These guys were risk takers, and and uh, what we were doing, uh, we were always supposed to be on the offensive. No defensive crap. Always on the offensive. And I don't know what you do with a mortar uh, on the def on the offensive. You don't need a bipod, and you and you need a base plate, but the tube. But the rest of it has got to be done quickly. Mm -hmm. You can't set it up in a defensive situation because we weren't defensive. And then have some sergeant out there drop his sight and, and sight in on the target and, and then backside it to the mortar and do all this crazy stuff. You don't have time for that. you got to move it. How many guys were in the mortar team? Three? Uh, twelve. Oh, twelve? Yeah. Okay. Did you most have them were ammunition carriers. Do you remember any... Like, I know... The guys that I served with, you always have a few characters that, that I remember stand, their names that stand out, like the friendships. Did you have anyone that stands out in, in particular? Not particularly. Yeah. Because it uh, in Normandy, uh, my assistant gunner, uh, he had an old style trenching tool with a cross piece or a handle, and he didn't tie it down to his leg, and that came up and caught a suspension line, broke several suspension lines. So he came in pretty hard, yeah, and it, it uh, knocked out about six teeth when wow. that handle came up and hit him. So uh, he was out of it. The uh, gunner, uh, we were pinned down with some uh, some snipers, and uh, first are in a shape of an L, and uh, where that sniper was out there we don't know, but the sergeant got word down to me <clears throat> to. Uh, have somebody get some am extra ammunition. They thought, he thought we were low on ammunition, we weren't. So I crawled up, made the L, went up to him and said, get somebody. I said, I'll do it. He said, no, you get a volunteer. So I went back to the squad, real, crawling real low in that hedgerow, and uh, talked to the guys. The gunner volunteered. And I told him to go around to the gate, come back, and you'll meet the assistant officer there, and they, both you guys will go. Uh, well. From there on, I didn't see him, but he went around to the gate, came out, and right at the point where the two roads intersect, uh, he and the officer climbed over the hedgerow in a sniper sign mm -hmm. and shot him right in the head. And the bullet entered also the stomach of the executive officer, so he was out for a bit. But they never did get the ammunition, so I lost two guys.